Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the most is 8 second gaming and in today's video we are going to be breaking down one tip for every single hero. But if you guys are looking to take your Overwatch deal to the next level then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have top of a coaches creating the best most highly informative guides to make you the best player you could possibly be. Doesn't matter if you want to get better positioning, decision making, aim, learn a new hero, doesn't matter, we have guides for you. So if you want to climb to a new peak rank, click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today. But okay, let's jump into things and start off with the tanks. And starting off with Roadhog himself. And the best tip we can give for him is learning to be fully self-sufficient. Roadhog is able to heal half of his health on a fairly low cooldown. And the best way you can apply the most pressure to the enemy team in most scenarios is playing almost completely alone, hunting for picks, and making enemies respect the space you create. This can be used to take away high grounds from enemies or even completely disrupt their backline while looking to one-shot anyone to take you out of the fight. But now moving into Reinhardt, and Reinhardt's shield should be used as a way to get himself out of danger in most scenarios. You are a brawling tank with the intention to get in and clobber enemies with your hammer, not a tank who helps their team walk forward safely with his shield, as if you do so, you won't have enough health on your shield for when you need it to get back out safely. Next up, Zarya, and selfishness is what we want to see on Zarya. Simply being a frontline menace will allow you to take near all aggression off of your team and you will be able to farm up charge best when using your bubbles on yourself as you can have much greater idea of how many people are looking at you compared to your allies. Jumping into Winston now, always engage on your bubble's cooldown. We cannot stress this enough. Your bubble has a considerably long cooldown in comparison to your leap, so you do not want to waste your engages. Engaging only when you have bubble up is key to ensuring you survive until your leap is back up to bring you to safety. From there, you just rinse and repeat. Now for Sugma, maintain your distance. We never want to see you blasting enemies with your balls of damage from melee distance. Your entire purpose is to maintain space away from enemies and output consistent damage, and that would only put you in harm's way. The only time you should really be pushing up into an enemy who isn't already on the brink of death is if you need to cancel an important ability with your rock as being a melee distance will make your rock near unmissable. For Wrecking Ball though, learn to bounce off walls. It's one of, if not the most important techs on Hammond to be able to simply roll up to a wall and perform a pile drive without the use of your grapple. It will save you in many situations and provide kills you otherwise would not be able to get. Now for the Battle Cattle Orisa, get in and out with your E cooldown. We have talked about this before, but you need to use your Javelin Spin before fortifying, because at the end of your fortify you will get it back again. However, this second E should be used to get back to safety, as your fortify should have been used to go extremely aggressive. Rotating your abilities in this way will give you great uptime for creating a lot of pressure in the front line with relative safety. Next up we have Ramaja, and you're going to want to line up your enemies. Your punch within Nemesis form can hit many enemies at one time, and it isn't all that difficult to do so assuming you are in their face already. Try your best to keep all the enemies on your screen at one time so that when you do go aggressive with Nemesis form, you can output tremendous damage at one time on multiple targets creating a ton of kill pressure for you and your team and opening up a lot of opportunities. Now for Doomfist, use your punch before blocking. There are many upsides to this. For starters, you need your block to be powered up, as this is the main part of your kit. Being able to fling enemies into walls and stun them leads to you shooting them in the head consecutively for free. But when you use your punch before looking to block incoming damage, you 1. Make enemies extremely aware of your existence, therefore baiting them to shoot you in your block form is the first place, and two, when you get powered up, your punch comes off cooldown anyways. So just always be looking to Mike Tyson before you block. But now for D.Va, never give diving enemies a break. Genjis, Tracers, Doomfists, Monkeys, even an enemy D.Va, regardless of who it is, if they are diving an ally, go straight onto them. These heroes after diving for the most part have no way out. So by counter diving, not only can you defense matrix to keep your team safe, but you can also play extremely aggressive onto the enemy and look to pick 
knocked them off for free. This is especially potent when baiting enemies into your team, playing from a different angle and acting as if you aren't expecting their engage. But last for the tanks, we have Junker Queen, and for her, you're going to want to use your shout as late as possible. Now that does sound kind of counterintuitive, right? Like your shout gives you some health and a speed boost, both of which will help you get your way into the brawl. However, it has such a long cooldown, so trust me when I say you don't really want to risk wasting a single second of its uptime. Try to find your way into battles without the use of shout and then you can use it when you already have enemies so low on health they run away in fear. But now we can move into the DPS characters and to start off with we got Genji. There are a lot of animation cancels that Genji has to offer inside and outside of his ultimate. And as a very high skill ceiling hero, he has many playstyles you must be able to adapt to. However, to gain the most value out of all these, you must be able to consistently have the end of your dash meet at your enemy, whether it's by being at the appropriate range or dashing at their feet so that the floor stops you. But now let's move into Widowmaker, and a good Widow can feel horrible to play against, but what feels worse is being constantly picked off by them without even knowing where they are. Switching up your position is a must on this hero, as once you you climb higher in ranks and people understand object permanence, they will play away from where they last got picked off by you. But now we can talk about Tracer, and blinking as Tracer should be like a third nature for you, and understanding the length of each blink isn't too difficult. Therefore, something more important to practice is to try to not fall into the trap of blinking, then shooting, then blinking, then shooting. It makes you extremely predictable and you should try to not blink unless needed. For example, being looked at by a pressuring hero such as Hanzo or to pulse slash melee. Moving into Torbjorn though, off angling and playing aggressive as a high damage, high HP and high burst DPS is the key to this pick. Your dual potential is unmatched as a DPS hero with your overload and turret. It's going to be very difficult for you to lose a 1v1 even to some tanks. Utilize this to its fullest by taking an angle away from your team so that you can create immense pressure just by simply existing. Moving into Symmetra though, turret bombing enemies is a great way to find sneaky picks and can be done from inside your team or even on an off angle. Just place three turrets on the floor and place your TP into the enemy backline. Jumping before placing the TP will help you put it exactly where you need. But what about Sojourn? Well, Sojourn's main quirk is her ability to deal almost 200 damage in an instant with her railgun, which, by the way, can go through several targets. This means by being able to have it up when necessary is key to being a great Sojourn player. Make sure to farm tanks and then look for a swift off angle to catch enemies by surprise as they look to reposition. This will net you some key picks to help your team win the fight almost instantly. For Ash, though, the key difference between a good and bad Ash player is your ability to swift change between scoped and unscoped shots, as the delay between being able to fire when doing both is non-existent. This means to get the highest damage output possible, firing several unscoped shots and then a few scope shots straight after will do the trick. Moving into May though, this pick is all about stalling objectives. May is significantly stronger on enclosed maps, but did you know she's also extremely helpful on push maps? When you are the last person alive after a checkpoint scenario, you will be able to buy that extra little bit of time with your ice wall and block so that all your allies will be able to respawn at the closer spawn point. Moving into Soldier 76 though, this hero is all about hitting fast rotations. Sure, heroes such as Sojourn can rotate through the map, but not as consistently as Soldier. As Sojourn is left vulnerable after using her slide, Soldier on the other hand is able to rotate as he pleases with no cooldown and taking advantage of this to take much harsher off angles for the enemy to deal with. With the dual potential Soldier 76 has, you will see certain value with this playstyle. For Reaper, you have multiple playstyle options as him, but your default should be always to play with your team and output large amounts of burst damage. However, how should you go about playing if you must take on a much more independent and flanker playstyle? Well, it's actually extremely simple, as teleporting onto off angles can be extremely easy, and on any maps where there are key rotations that lead to rooms, Reaper is an excellent hero to simply sit inside and wait for his prey to come. Now for Bastion, he can be thought of as a turn-based hero like Ramacha, where he has his key ability being his turret form, where he gains massive value from this. The key difference, however, is that he is still a force to be reckoned with outside of his turret form. This form must be used with caution, as the cooldown doesn't allow for any slip-ups and you will still be quite the walking punching bag due to your regular hitbox. 
For Echo though, a very mobile flying hero with amazing burst damage, she should be thought of as an executioner. The best way to find value on her is to follow up on your teammates damage with your beam, which will instantly remove anyone from existence. However, for solo playmaking situations, remember to rotate your abilities by using flight first, right click second, with a few regular shots before and after, and finish them off with a beam. This will finish off any squishy target 100% of the time when hit. Next up we have Hanzo, and this bow wielder can feel incredibly difficult to hit shots on sometimes, but that's likely because you're sitting from the safety of your team just firing in pot shots. But this actually isn't how Hanzo should be generally played. Hanzo has amazing mobility and duel potential. This makes him an amazing off-angling hero, where you can force duels and or find picks from unexpected places. And your sonar arrow just gives you that little bit of extra info you can use to keep enemies in the same location while you look to take riskier off angles. Now for Junkrat, he is an amazing hero for any enclosed map, but can certainly find value even on maps such as Circa Royale and Blizzard World. How you may ask, well every map usually has either closed off spaces, tiny little rooms, or sneaky flank angles. So if using your minds to jump over buildings ain't doing the trick, just play inside rooms where no one can push you. Junkrat has some of the best one-shot potential in the game if you know how to use it, as one primary fire and one mine will instantly eliminate any squishy opponent, both of which are incredibly easy to hit from up close when used in rapid succession. Now for Sombra, she is an extremely complex hero, but communication is key on her. Your playstyle each match should be based on how much your team is willing to work with you, as some games everyone may look to follow up on your hacks, but in others maybe no one is in the voice comm, in which case you would just hack enemies already in the fight where everyone will see it or look to assassinate backline supports alone. Sometimes you're gonna have to be a one man army. Moving into Pharah though, I wanna say a quick thank you to Blizzard for making it even harder to counter this champ. As her jet boosters are multi-directional depending on your movement key, especially against Echo, she is unkillable as ever. It allows for a much more aggressive and in your face playstyle, which should always be applied while attempting to engage from unknown locations. And as a hero that can fly, it is no issue as all maps have roofs, walls, and ledges that most of the time only Farah could get to freely. Use these to go extremely aggressive and then concussive blast to safety. And last for the DPS, we have Cassidy. With the consistent pick potential this hero brings to the table, playing with the team and looking for slight off angles where you are able to is a luxury you bring for free. As again, his dual potential is great with roll and magnetic grenade that does as much damage as a headshot. However strong Cass can be on his own, he should always anchor back to his team. You never want to stray too far from them as the one setback you have for your great damage output is your lack of mobility. That being said though, he can do what most other DPS heroes can't, which is jiggle peeking. You can go in and out of a wall due to the way he fires, unlike Soldier who cannot with his machine gun. Even Ash struggles to do this. But now let's move into our supports, and to kick things off, we got Lucio. Sure, the floor is lava is just a Lucio achievement, but they are actually trying to point you in the right direction with this one. Staying off the floor as Lucio is how he is meant to be played. Your ability to react to situations accordingly and get placed as you need to be is significantly easier when near or attached to a wall. And on a hero that is played as back to front as Lucio, meaning you will be needed in your backline to peel your other supports, as well as help pressure on the front line, being able to go everywhere fast is a must. Next up though, we have Ana, and you are a sniper, so take it literally. We see way too many people nearing the front line as Ana and just sitting next to their tank because sure, it might give you more opportunities to hit your abilities, but if anyone were to pressure you, which is extremely likely, you will be likely to have to waste your abilities to save yourself anyway. So stay in the back line as far as possible while maintaining LOS on your team for maximum value. Next though, we got Brig, and although your brawling capabilities are amazing, you need to think of yourself simply as a bodyguard for your other support. That's why she works so well with low mobility, high value supports such as Ana or Zenyatta. You can keep people off these high utility heroes so that they can either be much more aggressive against team compositions with no divers or significantly safer against the team compositions with them. Moving into Kiriko, live on the off angle. Sure, your team needs healing and you have a lot to output, but you need to utilize that small hitbox and decently high kill threat that she has. Having a double headshot onto an unsuspecting enemy isn't as hard as it may seem, so off angling or even hard flanking, which will take some pressure off your front line and onto you since you have the ability to get to safety with your teleport, is a pretty good option. Just make sure your team isn't getting pressured too hard before leaving the front line. Next up though, we have Zenyatta, and here we're going to be talking about two literally life-saving and life-ending tips. 
Live in your backline and keep fishing for picks. Your entire goal as Zenyatta is to maintain discord on the enemy tank when he goes in and fish for random picks with your right click. Sure, you have great, consistent damage with your primary fire, but it isn't even necessary to rank up until GM. You just need to have the willpower to go as far away from your team into your backline as possible to stay alive because if you play Zen, they will hunt you. Next though we got Baptiste, and we have talked about this hero a lot and we will say it again. You are an off angling god. Your dual potential is stronger than every other support and even most DPS due to your absurdly strong kit. Yes, it is meant for the use of your team, but when you focus it into yourself on a strong off angle on high ground, which most DPS can't even get to, you are an unkillable high burst damage god. Next up though, Moira, and the passive playstyle with Moira where you simply play to heal just doesn't work. Other heroes such as Baptiste or Ana can do way more if you just want to heal. That's why you need to be aggressive as a Moira player. Use Fade to find sneaky flanks on the backline and with your damage orb, it's simply all about the timing. This of course doesn't mean only DPS, you gotta pick your moments but when your team is topped up and the enemies aren't playing aggressively, that is your time to shine. Moving into Mercy though, you need to be live bait. Just being a pocket or helping Mercy isn't going to cut it as you move up in the ranks. You need to dance in front of the enemies, fly all over them, making them chase you around, wasting their time. Even edging on the brink of death as a low HP Mercy, enemies cannot resist but look at you. So master your movement, because you have some of the best movement out of all supports. Maybe Lucio is slightly better, but if you're able to do this, you will find tremendous value in this pick. And last for the supports, we got Life Weaver. You have to be passive. I mean, I know it sucks, but your damage is lackluster and your cooldowns are so long. The only way this pick really finds value is with great communication to your team to play aggressive. Letting them know you will bail them out if in any danger because your pedal platform can be used to block doorways or help heroes such as Cassidy, Reinhardt, or Junker Queen actually be playable on maps such as Watchpoint Gibraltar, so make use of that and you may actually see some positive win rate on him. But let me know your favorite tip in the comments down below and if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest greatest Overwatch tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Thanks all for watching. Once again, mates and gaming, I'll see you guys in the next one. But also, if you guys are going to be looking to take your Overwatch skill to the next level, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have top level coaches, including myself, creating the best, most highly informative guides to make you the best player you could possibly be. No matter what you struggle with, we have the solution for you. So click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, and start to improve today.